Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, Official Guide to the Revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 233. Please turn to it, page number 233, and today is our lesson number 329. The problem that you see there on page number 233, problem number 9, is the exact same problem that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single math problem out of this book. If you are interested in watching the original solution at, the much, at, a, at a much slower pace, you will find the original solution on day number 116. Let's see what we have here. Problem number 9 is what we are about to do. In that problem it says, a college student expects to earn at least $1,000 in interest. A college student expects to earn at least, minimum, at least $1,000 in interest. We want to earn a minimum of $1,000 in interest. Let's go on then. On an, on an initial investment of $20,000. On an investment of $20,000. If the money is to be invested for one year, at interest rate compounded quarterly, so we're going to compound it quarterly, compound it quarterly, and we're going to keep the money in the account for one year. The question simply is, what is the least annual interest rate that will achieve the goal? What is What needs to be the minimum interest rate? Now when we say what needs to be the minimum interest rate, it is understood. Here, here in this problem they actually spell it out by telling you what needs to be the least annual interest rate, but they did not need to. When someone says what's the in, what needs to be the interest rate, it is understood. Interest rates are always stated on an annual basis, per annum basis they're called. So if someone says this investment is going to pay us 12%, it's understood that it's 12% per year. Had it been something other than per year, they would have told you. They would have said it's 12% per quarter or 12% per decade or 12% per week. If, it's, if they do not say that, then by default it is understood that it is per year. Let's begin our story, shall we? So, let, let, here is our solution here. Now what we learned yesterday, I don't have a luxury of repeating everything that we learned yesterday. We spent a great deal of time yesterday uh, in the video and the video is titled Understanding Compound Interest Formula. We, we, yesterday we talked about how, uh, how uh, we, we talked about understanding the formula for compound interest, and what we told, what we said is that if we invest p dollars, if we invest p dollars, that pays us, that pays us r percent rate of return per period. This is rate of return, rate of return per period and if the money is kept in the account for n periods then, then the amount of money that we have at the end this is the final amount we will have the final amount that we have will have is this guy right here and P is our principal principal here is $20,000. The final amount that we want to achieve, final amount that we want to achieve is $21,000 because we want to achieve a minimum of $1,000 in interest. So the final amount that we want to achieve is not $21,000 but to be, to, be, to be more precise, the final amount that we want to have in the account is at least $21,000 because $20,000 we started out with and we want to earn a minimum of $1,000 in interest. Rate of return per period, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here, what, what we're trying to find here. Once we find the rate of return per period, our period here is a quarter, once we find the rate of return per period, this R is what we're trying to solve for here. Once we find the rate of return per period, we simply have to multiply it by 4, because there are 4 quarters in a year, and we'll get our answer. N equals to 4. N here is 4, because there are 4 quarters in a year, what, I, what I'm trying to point out here is not the bloody obvious. I'm not trying to point out the fact that there are four quarters in a year. What I'm trying to point out here is that there are four periods we're dealing with because we're keeping the money in the account for a period of one year. Now, had the money been sitting there for a year and a half, compounded quarterly, we would have had 
six periods. That's what I'm trying to point out. Here we're dealing with four periods. Not because, as I said already, not because I'm trying to point out the bloody obvious that there are four quarters in the year. That is not the reason. We're dealing with four because we're keeping the money only for a year. Had we kept the money in the account for half a year, we would have had two quarters. You get the idea. N would have been two in that case. So let's begin our story. Let let Q let Q be the interest rate. Let Q be the interest rate. Or quarter. We use letter R typically in the formula because R represents the rate of return. Here I'm going to use letter Q because to remind me so that we don't forget at the end that we are solving for the quarterly rate of return. At the end we're going to have to multiply that answer by 4 to get the final answer. That's my way of uh, reminding myself that I'm dealing with a quarterly rate of return. Q. Do you understand? So there are, there are obviously four quarters we're dealing with. So the balance that we want, balance in the account at the end of the year needs to be greater than or equal to 21,000 dollars. $21,000 because $20,000 that we started out with and $1,000 minimum that we want to earn in interest. And that amount, that $21,000, that $21,000 that we're looking at is going to be 1 plus our quarterly rate of return raised to 4 times our initial investment of $20,000. So that's what it is here. So the balance that we want in the account at the end of the year has to be greater than or equal to $20,000 that we started out with times the quarterly rate of return Q raised to 4 and this amount, the balance in the account that we want is $21,000. So $21,000 is greater than or equal to $20,000 times the quarterly rate of return and we're dealing with four quarters. The rest is downhill, the rest is very straightforward and simple. Let's divide both sides of inequality by a thousand. If we divide both sides of inequality by a thousand, we get rid of these three zeros. We end up with 21 over 20 is greater than or equal to 21 over 20 is greater than or equal to 1 plus 1 plus Q raised to 4. Let's take the 4 through to both sides. Let's take the 4 through to both sides. So 1 plus Q is less than or equal to, this is going to be 1.05. 1 21 divided by 20 is 1.05. So 1.05 and you take a 4 through to that. Now how do we take the 4 through of a, of a number in the exam? Because the calculator that they provide you on the, in, on the screen it's not very sophisticated, it's a very basic calculator. How do we find fourth root of a number in that calculator? It's very simple. Take the square root of the number first and then take a square root again. For example, for example, if somebody asks us to find the fourth root of 16, well, you take a square root of 16 first, you get a 4, and then the square root of 4 again and you get a 2, therefore the fourth root of 16 is 2. That's what we're going to do. A new calculator, pick up your calculator, take the square root of 1.05. Take the square root of 1.05. I need the room. Where can we do it? Perhaps we can erase all of this now, we don't need it. Let's continue our solution here. So 1.Q square root Where can I make a note? Square root of 1.05 is 1.0247. And you should be doing this out with me so that you can you can follow me here. Square root of 1.05. 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 Square root of 1
square root of 1.05, I, I should say equal to, it's not equal to, it's approximately equal to, it's approximately equal to 1.0243, and obviously I, for, I dropped all the other, other decimal places, and you take the square root of that quantity now. 1.0247, and that's going to be approximately 1.01. Two, so this quantity that we're looking at here, this quantity that we're looking at here, is this right here. One point zero one two two seven. And we, now we have to solve for Q. We're interested in Q, so we have to subtract one from both sides. And Q would equal to point zero one. Two, two, Remember, Q is the quarterly rate of return. We want to find the yearly rate of return. There are four quarters in a year. So once we find the value of Q, we simply multiply it by four, and we'll have our answer. And therefore, our yearly return, yearly rate, is going to be whatever that is, 0.0127. Let me find out. 0.01. 227 times 4 and we get 0 0.4908 which is approximately 0 0.049 or 0.049 or about 4.9 percent voila 4.9 percent or 4.91 percent because the 0 0.8 should, should be rounded up 4.91 percent. Now what I'm about to say you can look at it as a good news or you can look at it as a bad news it is a hard question it is in the exam it's going to appear as a very hard question it's not going to appear in the exam unless the person is about to score in the 90th percentile or above I was about to say 700 or more because I'm still set in my old ways uh, from 2-3 years ago. Uh, on the old GRE the scale used to be from 200 to 800. In the new scale, uh, if, unless you're going to score in the 90th percentile or above, you most likely will not come across a problem like this in the exam because these days it is computer adapted. It adapts to your ability. So the good news is that if something like this does appear on the exam, on your exam, that is actually a very good sign. That is actually a very good sign. That was it. Now, let's take a quick look, very quick look as to how they did it in the book. Oh my God. Where are they going to lose? A lot of people right away, right off the bat, is where they have R over 400. That's when they're going to lose almost half the people. Where does this hell, where in the hell did R over 4, 400 come from? And where it is coming from is this. What can I show you? Let's, let's, say, let's say my rate of return is 6%. Okay, I'm going to make it very quick. Let's say the rate of return is 6%. I'm, I'm just making it up, okay? I'm just trying to make you understand where this R over 400 is coming from. R is the rate of return. 6%, we write that as how in decimal? We write that as 0 0.06 or we write that as 6 over 100. But remember, this 6% is per year. And therefore, per quarter, there's going to be one fourth of that amount. So if it's 6% per year, it is 1.5% per quarter. We have to take one-fourth of that, which is where the one-fourth comes in. And voila, before you, before you know it, you end up with 6 over 400, which is where they're getting their R over 400. And R is what they're trying to solve for. But as always, their, their solution, there's nothing wrong with it, but it tends to be academic, kind of geeky, kind of nerdy, very academic, very mathematical. Try to solve the thing on an intuitive level. You do not have to keep the interest rate on an annual basis from the very beginning up to the very end, which is what they're doing. You can adapt. 
you can you can convert your problem and solve the problem based on a quarterly basis like we did here do all the work and at the end what you find is a quarterly rate of return which is fine at the end simply multiply it by four and we're done instead of carrying that four throughout which is where they're getting hour over 400 anyway i'll see you tomorrow okay bye now